Today's video is sponsored by Forever Pick. Each guitar pick is handmade by Luthier Robert S. Paul in Chicago, Illinois. Enjoy a rainbow of tone when you take advantage of 25% off by clicking the link in today's show notes. Earlier this year, I made a video on the Electro Harmonics Metal Muff, and uh, the basis of that video was precisely about why I do not like that pedal. And while it's certainly true that I don't really care for that pedal, it should be known that that video was intended to be primarily as a joke. I put it together, and it was intentionally over the top, specifically to get a laugh uh, and to irritate a few other people out there that uh, uh, just just cuss. You know, but that being said, there are actually quite a few other pedals from Electro Harmonics that I really, really like. And I think they are one of the oldest guitar pedal companies around. They have been come up with some very, very innovative designs uh, all the way back since the 70s, many of which are st still very, very relevant today. A lot of Electro Harmonics pedals from that era go for a lot of money on the vintage market, and that is not something to be taken lightly. They do put out a lot of really, really, really good products. So with that said, here's a list of seven Electro Harmonics pedals that I think every guitar player should check out. Number seven, the Electric Mistress. The Electric Mistress, to me anyway, seems to be primarily a flanger pedal, but it's very, very unique in that it also has a chorus effect built into it, and you can actually blend the two together. Uh, the flanger, flanger by itself can probably be duplicated in any number of other pedals out there. Uh, but the chorus effect to me on top of it and the two blended together seem, you know, it just makes a very, very, very unique modulation effect that is very hard to beat. Not too many people talk about the Electric Mistress today, either for its chorus or its flanger. But, you know, in my opinion, you know, if you really, really like vintage sounding effects, this is, uh, this kind of has that vintage modulation flavor to it and uh, is very, very unique. If you're into modulation, you should definitely check out the Electric Mistress. Number six, the nine series pedals. The truth is there's gonna be probably quite a few more than seven pedals on this list because a lot of these are groups of pedals that I am encompassing all into the same group because there are quite a few of them and it's very, very difficult for me to pick out just one out of that entire group of pedals. And uh, one of those groups of pedals are the nine series from Electro Harmonics. If you've ever been in a band situation and you, you know, you've got maybe a couple of guitar players in your band and a singer and a drummer and a bass player, standard, you know, four or five piece rock band, whatever it may be, and you really, really wish you had a synth, a, somebody to play synthesizer or you had a stringed instrument player or, uh, you know, horns or brass or uh, anything like that. Of course, those musicians can oftentimes be very, very hard to find. Electro Harmonics has just about solved every square inch of that problem for guitar players and bands that are, are looking for those sounds. And I encourage you to go check out Electro Harmonics' YouTube channel because they have demos of all the 9 Series pedals up on their channel. It's mind-blowing to me how realistic some of these sounds really are. Being a child of the 80s and having very fond memories of that era, particularly as it relates to music, the Synth 9 is probably my favorite because there's all kinds of 80s synth tones in that, uh, in that pedal that really make me just want to start an 80s Flock of Seagulls tribute band or something because all those sounds are in there and every other pedal in the line uh, at, you know, seems to follow suit with the sounds that it is trying to produce. The 9 Series pedals, by the way, include the B9, the C9, the Key 9, the Mel 9, and the Synth 9. Again, check out Electro Monarchs' YouTube videos on these, and more importantly, go check out the pedals themselves. I think you'll be impressed. Number 5, the Ravish Sitar. There's another tone of a musical instrument out there that I have often wondered how I might be able to get a hold of that tone without having to actually go by and learn to play the instrument. Again, the Ravish Sitar has solved this problem for us. The Sitar is, of course, a stringed instrument that uh, is kind of sort of similar to 
uh, to a guitar, but it uh, comes from a completely different part of the world and uh, really doesn't sound, it sounds like a stringed instrument, but it does not sound like a guitar. Uh, it's a very, very unique sounding stringed instrument. And, you know, it can produce a lot of very elegant tones, exotic tones uh, that are very hard to describe, but I think if you don't know what a sitar sounds like, look it up and I think it'll sound very familiar to you. The Ravish Sitar takes your guitar and makes it sound exactly like a sitar. Uh, and in my experience, I don't personally own one, unfortunately. However, I have had the opportunity to sit down and play with one a number of times. And it opens up in a, a whole new, opens up a door to an entirely different world of guitar playing. And it's a very, very inspiring pedal. Kind of similar to what the 9 Series pedals are doing, except this one is focused specifically on the sitar, and technically it's not really considered as part of the 9 Series, though I have to assume the same technology was used to develop it. Definitely not an everyday pedal for everybody, but certainly a very, very cool one to have in your arsenal. Number 4. The POG. The POG stands for Polyphonic Octave Generator. In other words, it's an octave pedal. May not seem like a whole lot, but there's been a lot of different versions of this pedal that have come out over the years. Uh, and Electroharmonics are one of the first ones to develop the octave effect uh, itself. And they have continued to perfect it over the years. If you are an octave user, this is probably one of the more popular ones out there, if not the most popular. I am just now beginning to get into octave. I never had much of an appreciation for it before. However, after my recent demo of an octave pedal, my eyes are now being opened to what a useful effect uh, an inspiring effect it can be. The POG series pedals track very, very well. Uh, they sound great, and they have a lot of tweakability options on it uh, to give users all different kinds of room and tones and uh, room for inspiration. Number three, the Soul Food. This one's one of my favorites from Electro Harmonics. The Soul Food is Electro Harmonics' take on the famous uh, Klon Centaur Overdrive pedal. If you're not familiar with the Klon Centaur, it's probably the most valuable and expensive pedal on the market. Uh, they were made, I believe, back in the early 90s, and nowadays they go for upwards in the two, you know, the $2,000 range uh, on the used market. They sell for ridiculous amounts of money. However, many people, if not most people, do not have the money for a $2,000 overdrive pedal with literally with three knobs on it. So Electro Harmonix. Among a lot of companies do this, but the one, but the Soul Food is Electro Harmonics' take on the Klon, and they got, if it's not identical sounding to the Klon itself, it's very, very close. One thing that it does that I did not expect is it actually pro also produces a fair amount of gain, uh, the type of gain that a lot of players would describe as transparent. You know, if you're looking for kind of a mid to high gain overdrive, this is a very, very good place to start. If you like the Soul Food, I also recommend that you check out the JHS modded version of the Electro Harmonic Soul Food. They have their own mod that they created for that pedal, and while the, all the characteristics of the original pedal are still in the JHS mod, it offers even more flexibility and more, uh, more, more options, and if you like flipping toggle switches and stuff like that, there's plenty of them on there for you. EHX did such a fantastic job on the Soul Food, in my opinion, that... Today, after seeing a demo of theirs on a new pedal called the Flatiron Fuzz, which is their take on a Rat 2 pedal, and I'm going to include the Flatiron Fuzz as an honorable mention on this list, because they did such a great job on the Soul Food, I am really, really excited to try out the Flatiron Fuzz, and I'm not even a, a Rat pedal fan at all. But the demo that I heard sounded really, really good. Number two, Memory Man. The Memory Man, this is another pedal that I'm going to include the entire group of because there have been several different versions of the Memory Man itself that have come out over the years. Uh, on top of that, they come out with some smaller versions, uh, such as a, uh, a couple of versions of the Memory Boy, and there's even a really small version called the Memory Toy. The original Memory Man was one of the first delay pedals to come out, and uh, that was one of the first ones to get really, really popular. And, you know, they sound fantastic. You know, some of the larger versions have all different kinds of... If you're a delay fanatic, uh, I highly recommend you check out some of the options like the uh, the Stereo Memory Man uh, the ha with uh, the Hazari version and, uh, you know, and on up the line. You know, so there's a couple of those. I think the very top one is uh, there's a component on the inside of that that has a really, really long delay on it. Uh, I can Off the top of my head, I can't recall exactly what the model is, but I'll post a, po a photo of it right up here on the screen so that you can see it. 
Uh, there's a component inside that particular delay pedal that is very hard to find, so they, they only manufacture that one in, in small runs, and it's the most expensive of the bunch. But if you can get a hold of that one, that's probably the, that's probably the one to have, especially if you, if you like really, really long delays. Number one, the Big Muff. I am quite sure there's a, a number of you that are going to be very surprised that I have the Big Muff at number one. I have not been shy about the fact that I am not a fuzz guy at all. At all. I don't care for him. However, the Big Muff is the flagship pedal of Electroharmonics. That is the one that's put them on the map, and that is the one that everybody seems to have. You know, Even though I may not be a fuzz guy, there are a lot of fuzz fanatics out there, and there are quite a few people out there that actually try to collect every single version of the big muff that has come out over the years i've seen pictures of people that have every single one of them and you know it's a photo of of a very large floor area (laughs) because there's been so many different versions of it but they keep making different versions of it because it's that popular and when you're talking fuzz pedals you know there's there's a couple others that are out there but the big muff is the big muff seems to be one of the ones that you know, all the other pedal companies try to emulate or try to create their own version of or draw inspiration from. Uh, the Big Muff, of course, has been used on, you know, by any number of artists, from David Gilmore of Pink Floyd to Billy Corgan of Smashing Pumpkins. The Big Muff has been used by many, many, many big name artists over the years uh, and continues to do so today. Electroharmonics is still coming out with new versions of this. They just recently released a version called the Op Amp Big Muff that is essentially a take on the original Op Amp vintage Big Muff that Billy Corgan was known for using on the Smashing Pumpkins records. Even more recently, they've come out with another version called the Triangle Big Muff, and this one is, uh, my understanding, is apparently a throwback to the very first original Big Muff that EHX ever put on the market. And I have to admit, even hearing demos of those pedals kind of has me a little bit interested. Okay, maybe not, but I think it's cool that they still continue to come out with new designs for it all the time. Leave me a comment down below. Let me know what your favorite electroharmonics pedal is. I will post links to all of the pedals, uh, at least most of, all the ones I can find anyway, uh, down in the description here below. Please consider hitting the subscribe button to this channel if you have not already, as well as the alert icon. That way you make sure that you don't miss out on future content. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video. You know what? There are tons of young people out there that want to get involved in music and do not have the means to do so. If you are watching this video, most likely you're a musician, and many experienced musicians have tons of broken and unwanted gear lying around that they're not doing anything with. Please visit my friends at Share the Music on Facebook at the link below and learn how you and your unwanted gear can help change somebody's life.